What up, gang? What up, squad? It is your boy, Are You Theorist? Really, the coolest, the trillest young king, only to play from as we speak. Welcome back for the lit banger, gang. So, we got Sunny V2 back in the building. I know y'all love when I react to that, man. So, we back with another one, man. We got 80% of Pimp My Ride was fake. Here's the evidence, all right? So, everybody knew that shit was fake as fuck. How are you gonna find somebody, pimp they ride out, and a lot of that shit costs thousands of dollars, and they don't pay nothing? Come on, man. It, 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 was, it was given fake from the jump, all right? Um, anyway, man, if you're new, subscribe, like the video. If you want to wait to the end to like and subscribe, that's cool. Um, if you enjoy my reaction, you know, you owe me a like. Can we can we do that? You got to be real, though. You got to be 1,000 with it, all right? Don't cap. All right, man, let's go, hear, uh, let's go ahead and hear what Sunny V2 got to say, man. Thanks. You're out of house. It's not my house. It's a stage hmm? house. And the contestants' houses weren't the only thing what? Pimp My Ride lied about. The reactions were staged and retaken multiple times. Certain upgrades were taken off as soon as the cameras cut. It's for a boat. He goes, it's a GPS for waterways. It will not work in your car. And disappointingly, even Exhibit himself had no real interest what in the car. What Soccer moms <laughs> coming up to me, telling me about their husband and their car that he had since the 60s. And I was like, stop talking to me about this. I know Damn. it when asked if the show was fake, a former contestant replied with a single word correct, which isn't surprising as the show even lied about who the contestants were. For example, in season 2, episode 10, yeah, Brooke was introduced as a 22-year-old film lover working hard to go to grad school, which had been fabricated by the producers as she was actually a 25-year-old cocktail waitress planning to move back to New York. The reason for this, as explained by Jake from season 3, was because Pim My Ride only picked people in their early 20s. What? There was a Why? age limit of 22 years old. Confirming that the show was lying about <laughs> contestants' details before filming had even started. In the first 30 seconds of each episode, Exhibit emphasizes that each contestant doesn't know they're about to get picked. He has no idea. Bro, they be capping. Yet this was strange as the <clears throat> contestant always answered the door, always had a microphone on them, and even had their windows blacked out as if they didn't want to. Swear I did not even think of that. This is why I love watching Sunny V2. He points out the stuff that just goes over our head. The, the microphones and the windows and everything. Gosh. Sheesh. Right in front of our face. Inside. <laughs> well, it turns out Brooke, the supposed 22-year-old film lover, had been pre-selected by a friend to appear on the show, and as a result, she'd state, when Exhibit showed up at my house to tell me I'd been chosen, <coughs> not a surprise. What was a surprise was when the producers made me react and react and then react again to Exhibit showing up, finally coercing me into doing a cartwheel, and she wasn't the only contestant what? who'd had this experience. And they push you on how to see Why the snake, though? That's so extra, bro. Like that. The show didn't have an actual script, but they did steer the dialogue in a direction <coughs> that they wanted. If I said something they liked, they would have me repeat it over and over on camera. This had been commented by Seth, who appeared in season 5, who was also well aware that Exhibit was coming to his house, stating, They told me I was in the running for my own episode, but it was between me and two other people. When I was sitting in the house waiting for a knock at the door, they said that it was either going to be Exhibit or a producer telling me I didn't win. Thinking back on it, that was all bullshit, but it did make the surprise genuine, which was the same experience as Erin from season 4 episode 2. She was one of three contestants. One of them would be chosen. Someone came and knocked at the door. If it was Exhibit, they won. Each contestant was at least somewhat aware that they'd be getting a knock on the door because, <laughs> well, the homes they were in were actually owned by Pimp My Ride. What? A Huffington Post article clarified these houses were oftentimes not the contestants' homes. Instead, each dwelling had been rented by MTV. <laughs> they were just chilling For there? example, what when Jake fuck? from season 3 was asked, did the film crew show up and stage the whole surprise as part of the episode He'd respond by stating it wasn't my house. It was a place owned by one of the crew members. Similarly, Wild. Seth from season 5 stated, The house was rented from Craigslist because I lived in an apartment, and they need a house with a big open driveway for filming, That's which is smart, certainly though. reasonable, although sometimes the house was part of the person's story. In season 2, for example, Eric's car had supposedly been beat up in the rough yeah. streets of Compton. In Compton, ain't no street lights. <laughs> However, they judging from good, a though. quick look at Google Maps, it seems the episode was filmed in a much nicer neighborhood. So, if Eric's story was inconsistent and Brooke's story from earlier was downright fabricated, then who else's stories were exaggerated for the sake of the show? Well, it seems pretty much all of them. In Season 3, Jake's Buick had been bought from his grandma who smoked, and as a result, the show threw an extra few dozen cigarette butts in the car to make her just look like a totally disgusting person. On top of this, the show interviewed Jake's girlfriend toward the start of the episode, yet MTV apparently questioned me having a girlfriend and suggested I dump her because it was better for my death 
desperate dude with a shit wow. car image. A producer later responded by stating, why would we want a kid to break up with his girlfriend? How would that have helped the show? Uh, so while Jake's claim about his girlfriend was somewhat questionable, uh, the cigarette story was confirmed by Seth, who had a similar look at that experience. Candy, bro. I know That's I'm wild. fat, but they went the extra mile to make me look extra fat by telling the world that I kept candy all over my seat and floor just in case I got <laughs> hungry. However, up. it seems the faker story was Justin's in season six. His front bumper had supposedly fallen off in a car crash. Here is a result of a three car pile of right here. Although according to a 2010 tweet, <laughs> my friend Justin was on Pimp My Ride. On TV, he said his RAV4 was involved in a three car crash. No, it wasn't, dude beat his car up with a bat. The same user then clarified, what he told me was that MTV suggested to him that he and his friend should do more damage to the car, which was confirmed by Justin himself who so added, So what are they gonna yes, say how much these motherfuckers got paid? Cause I know they had to get paid for this. When are they gonna talk about how much they got paid? They didn't get no shout outs, there was no social media. Aircraft remover and enhanced the dent on the side of my car. Whilst introducing the episode, Justin stated, One of my crazy ex girlfriends actually threw nail polish on my hood. Although, when he was asked, Why are all your ex girlfriends <laughs> so angry? Justin revealed it was just something I made <laughs> up, while Erin from season four was also encouraged to make her car look bad. They asked the to snake, make though, trash bro. In the car. We went in and out. And so bro, she was skinny back then. The what it the seems the only real part of the show's intro was exhibits in dialogue because it wasn't scripted I could say whatever I want to say and when exhibit drove the car to the shop exhibit did actually take the cars and drive them away with the exception of a few that were too broken down and then they made it look like <laughs> although this segment created <laughs> even funny. more problems most people believe that PMR takes the car and gives it back in like a week or something that's what I thought was gonna happen too but in actuality they took my car for roughly seven months being a massive inconvenience for some of the show's contestants and they make it look like they're moving really 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 fast, but in reality, <laughs> Damn, when bro. asked for the five months they had your car, did they supply you with a replacement car? Justin from season six replied, No, they gave me two thousand dollars to rent a car, but I was 19 at the time. I rented a car for a month and it cost me a thousand dollars, forcing ah. Justin to find his own Funny transport for the remaining four months. Seth from season five had a similar experience, being forced to go to a really small shady company off the freeway by LAX because they were the only ones willing to rent to me because of my age. It sucked having that rental car because they wouldn't take payments over the phone, so once a month I had to drive all the way from <laughs> West Covina to LAX just for them to swipe Jeez. my card. Although the rental situation was better for other contestants. They had my car for about six months, and that time I had the rental car for six months. That cost way more than Jake from season two three adding, they gave me a really nice Mitsubishi Lancer to drive for the time they had the Buick. In the meantime, the crew began to plan how the rides were going to be pimped, although according to a former production staffer, this was also somewhat staged. Ooh, man, they faking no everything. What they say, fake it till you make it? Ain't lying. Is not. Lying. Boardroom scenes with the WCC <laughs> crew took a long time to shoot. They often had to be fed line by line. Some of those guys never really got used to being on TV. Some of the lines in the shop probably seem rehearsed because producers would come up with them and feed them to the WCC guys. Although excluding this, the mechanics were fairly innocent. The segment where they'd pimp the car was almost impossible to fake. They really did put shit in the vehicles and change everything out. But when contestants were shown what their new car looked like, Pimp My Ride employed even more staging. Finally came the day for the big reveal. They filmed my reaction <laughs> to the car at least 10 times before I'd what? even seen it. And when I did, holy hell, poor Betsy looked like Barbie's dream car from hell. It was pimped to the nines and hideous. This had been written by Brooke who gave a much different reaction she like during that her episode. Shit. Beautiful, perfect color. She didn't exactly. like it. While every other contestant also filmed their reveal multiple different times. We had to take a lot of takes over and over and over and over and over and over again. Justin stated they had to keep retaking my reaction. Seth stated I even had to do the reveal of the car like three times. <laughs> However, Jake's reaction anecdote was the strangest yeah. of them all. His first real reaction to the car was just quiet amazement where he said this is good. They immediately yelled redo and then things got a bit weirder. I remember this very clearly. Big Dane, very big dude. He like puts his arm around my shoulder, kind of walks me around the shop for like 10 minutes and he's like, listen, we put a lot of work into this. We expect you to be a little more in 
enthusiastic, hell, although it would have been hard to conjure enthusiasm <laughs> for a car that barely worked, as Jake would later write. The problem with the show is they don't fix they any just of the mechanical the... issues. Uh -huh. My car was a they piece of shit. Outside. What they did was make my piece of shit sound exceptionally awesome, which is great, just not wow. great enough to drive on roads. The HuffPost article expanded on this by stating, the car needed a muffler, and so a fake exhaust pipe was installed to make it seem as if that's what the car was supposed to sound like, even though it was just a lack of a muffler, while Exhibit brought up a much more dangerous incident. There was an instance where one of the cars wasn't fixed correctly, <laughs> and long story short, this kid was driving this vehicle that was supposed to be like damn near brand new, and the steering wheel came off when he was oh, driving it. It's therefore no surprise that the production staff has said, crazy. I can say that the This dude just said the steering wheel came off while homie was driving. Dang. Oh my goodness, bro. I would have sued the. Hey, if I wouldn't have got paid before, I, we, we didn't pay now. We in the big leagues. No shit. Us often weren't fully ready when we shot the reveal. Some had to stay in the shop another week or so to get finished before the kids got them back, especially if they had mechanical issues, and it was Seth and his uh, candy bars who seemed to fit sick. this category. Pimari doubled down on his supposedly crappy diet by installing a cotton candy machine in the boot of the car, what? which didn't even work as the cotton candy machine didn't have a protective hood that fit. <laughs> so if I tried turning it on, it would get candy strands everywhere. Very messy, so I never used it again after the shoot. Pointless. Seth also also never used the LED lights installed in the seats as they would get really hot if left on, while he also had to remove the gull wing doors because the pistons used to lift them kept them from putting seat belts in the back, oh which was highly goodness, dangerous. Use, to add a cherry on top of the cake, he had to fork out a further $1,700 for a brand new engine, then adding, after that I drove it for a month before someone hit me and totaled it. However, the end to Justin's RAV4 <coughs> was even more brutal. After five years of taking his pimped out ride to car shows, Justin's RAV4 caught on fire whilst driving as a result of faulty wires. It was later confirmed that this had nothing to do with the show oh. and at least Justin's car was the same one he first sent up. in. As That's when Tavrish up. uploaded a video titled I bought an abandoned pimp my ride minivan he'd make a shocking discovery. The show originally introduced the minivan as a 1998 <coughs> Plymouth Grand Voyager. However Tavrish discovered the car was now a 1999 Dodge Caravan showing that after they wrecked the original minivan the show sneakily pimped a completely different Shoot. car. As a result, Exhibit has been the brunt of most of the show's backlash. I was the face it of the was, show. You know what I'm saying? So people associate me with what happened to the car. Which feels pretty unfair given every contestant has said he's an awesome guy. Exhibit real. In fact, Exhibit only did pimp my ride for the following reason. I actually did pimp my ride because I thought they was going to play my music video. <laughs> However, it instead seemed to have the opposite play my music video. Effect. The show was taking away my credibility of oh. what I've already done. It was taking so much time I wasn't able to tour, I wasn't able to record albums. Oh, damn, I definitely didn't know I, I was, that. You know, I was there filming, 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 filming. Which is even more depressing given he was barely paid what? for it. But at that particular time, you wouldn't really have to pay for Nah. <laughs> Man, that's cold and blooded. as a result, it's no surprise that Pimp My Ride is unlikely Hell to make no. a comeback. When are we gonna get a Pimp no, My Ride? No, no, that there'll shit be no dead. more Pimp My Ride. Hey, ain't no more Pimp My Ride because they can't pimp out shit. <laughs> Anyway, man, if y'all new, subscribe, like the video. If y'all love these Sunny V2 videos, y'all know what to do. Hit that comment section below. Uh, let me know if y'all want some old Sunny V2 uh, videos because they got some videos from, you know, back in the gap. So y'all let me know if y'all if y'all want me to go back and, you know, check those out, man. Um, like, subscribe, all that good stuff, man. Nay, nay, let's close this out, gang. Dad, dad, dad. Say bye. Dad, dad. What? Maggie, you want to go in the video. Maggie, you want to be in the video? Yeah. That's Maggie is right there. All right, Nene, close us out. Say bye. Bye bye. I All don't right. have baby day. Why? Right. Hey, okay, we're gonna buy it for you, okay? Maggie. No. Hey, Maggie. <laughs> All right, Nene, say bye. Close us out. All right, all right, all right.